And we're back. Awesome. MMA show. Um, so over the weekend we had UFC 248. So we're gonna do some little post-fight action, and uh, we'll do a little preview for what is this? What is this? Fight night like 170 or something? We'll do uh, a very brief. Yeah, I do believe so. I think, well, I think it's 169. That's 170. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll just jump right on in. Um, well, I guess yeah, it was Oliver versus Griffin on the prelims or the main card. Oh, this is the main card. That's the main card. Yeah. My, uh, why does it only give me the main card? Off to a stellar start here. Well, Sean, we have Sean O'Malley in the prelims. Oh, okay, so actually the prelims are pretty good. So yeah, we'll go over those real quick. Um, the first fight on the prelims was Duran Wynn versus Gerald Mearshart. What an oh yeah. What an unfortunate name that is. Uh, <laughs> but uh, as usual, Duran Wynn looks decent early. Um, oh, yeah, the short dude. Yeah, the five foot six middleweight. Yeah. Uh, barely uses any of his wrestling. Tries to swing haymakers at him and uh, eventually gets kind of tired. And uh, Mira Shart starts hitting him to the body. And then gets a round three submission finish after dropping him with body shots. I think. No, he, he ends up cracking him the head after some body shots. Um, yeah. Now, now Deron Wynn is on a two-fight losing skid. I imagine he's either going to get cut or he's going to have to drop, drop a weight class. Oh. One of the two. Um, he's definitely going to drop down to 170. Yeah, he doesn't look completely outmatched in terms of skill, I feel like, most of the time. He just, uh, he always gets gassed. And what, what flavor are you drinking right there? What is that? <laughs> this is, uh, <laughs> Red, Red Dragon. I had the blue one the other day. It was, it was awful. That was pretty good. I had the, uh, the, the uh, the, uh, jalapeno one. Yesterday. That one was okay, I thought. Surprisingly. It's not bad. Yeah, I, I think you barely taste the jalapeno. More strawberry kiwi than anything. But uh, yeah, um, anyways, <laughs> I had to know. <laughs> I'm drinking coffee. Um, uh, so yeah, Drum Wynn doesn't look terrible. He just uh, gets tired and gets figured out because he's very short. Um, he's not fat. He's just a little bit... Um, Carries a little more body fat than the other, than the other um, you know, guys his weight. And uh, he's so short. Um, he's like a little tank. You know, he's a little... Yeah. You know, he, I mean, he's got like the DC build, but like to to the next level. Because DC is already small for his weight. Um, yeah. And wins like, you know... Yeah, and hey, I, I, you're going to have to pause it really quick. Because I, I got to put some pants on. Or are you going to cut this out? I can't see your pants. I can't see your legs at all. I know, but I gotta move this camera down. <laughs> I don't have any pants on. What? What? So you guys just edit this part out. Oh my god. Oh my god. Or keep it in, I don't care. Uh, this is, uh, uh, this is uh, the house of Ross providing the quality you've come to expect. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like this, just, what you're wearing looks exactly like underwear. <laughs> it looks no different than underwear. It would, no one would have known. Um, all right, whatever. Um, so yeah, Draw wins a midget, and uh, he lost. <laughs> um, yeah, he, uh, I mean, honestly, he could be he could be fighting a uh, mighty mouse for God's sakes if he wanted yeah. to. Yeah, he's really he's really short. He's I mean, he's, big, he's muscular as shit, but he's just like yeah. You could he's you gotta trim down. You gotta you know a f- professional fighter. You gotta get trimmed down. Get down to like one seventy. Yeah. I mean, God, for fuck's bot- sake, you get, he's the, he's shorter than like most lightweights. He's literally he's like <laughs> he's the same height as T.J. Dillashaw. Let that sink in. Yeah. Um. Uh, but he sh- he should be fighting at one seventy. Probably would be his his best weight. I have to imagine. Um. And then uh, Adolfo Vieira 
you know, Jiu-Jitsu Ace comes in and gets cracked pretty early. Um, I can't remember which if it was a knee or a punch right now. Um, um, I just remember that fight. The, the really jacked uh, USADA needs to flag this Brazilian. Adolfo Vera, you know, hit the fucked up eye. Uh, oh yes. What did he get? Yes, was it yes, near? Yes. Uh, was it near a punch that hit, that really messed his eye up? It was a punch. Um, I believe right on his right on his eye. Yeah. Right. Um. Yes, yeah, so he gets rocked. Uh, gets the guy to the ground. Um, takes his back briefly and then ends up in an arm triangle position. I think is what he finished him with, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was a triangle. We get yeah. this, I mean, I've, I was only half paying attention to the prelims, I'm being honest here. <laughs> um, I'm forgetting these. Definitely for the, during, especially for this boring ass Mark Madsen fight. That was a good fight, dude. You're crazy. That fight sucked. No, dude, that was, that was a really exciting fight. Cause, uh, that, was Matt, my least Matt, no. that was my least favorite fight on the card. Oh, no. There was definitely a worse fight on the card, I feel like. Mark Madsen, uh, he had the giant slam early in the fight. Um, I thought it was worse than the Adesanya fight. <laughs> oh, yeah. How the fuck is it the worst fight? I oh, my God. We're gonna we're losing subscribers by the minute. Um, <laughs> dude, he, it was mostly really, really exciting ground scrambles. Um, Madsen gets some amazing takedowns. Wins the first two rounds pretty, pretty clearly. <clears throat> Third round, he's just super gassed, and the dude, you know, beat the piss out of him. Um, and uh, <clears throat> and he survives long enough to get the the twenty nine twenty eight decision win. Uh, not any controversy, but uh, Madsen definitely needs to work on his stand up and his conditioning because, uh, like I said, it looked good, but very one dimensional, I would say. Yeah, I don't think either of them have a huge future. I mean, I don't know. Madsen's ten and zero, but see, it's different. Like he's one, you, you could say Khabib is one dimensional, but or people would say that, but it's not true because Khabib yeah, I wouldn't say not that. only are his take he has great takedowns and great like wrestling positions, but his jiu-jitsu is also great. Like he's he's one he's one dimensional in the sense that his grappling is leap leaps and bounds better than everything else, but He's not like a dimensional, like he just is good at jiu-jitsu or he's just good at takedowns. Like, like I would say Mark Madsen was pretty one-dimensional and uh, he was pretty much just a wrestler, pretty much all he was. Uh, yeah. Not a lot of submission threats or anything like that. Um, yeah. And not the best cardio. Um, and then your boy, Sean oh, O'Malley. Get Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley. In the my, first my man. Yeah. Just just beat the shit out of this guy. I don't even know why they matched this guy up. But looking at the dude's record, it's not it's not even good. Yeah, well, he was, on, uh, he, together. Was, he was on the Ultimate Fighter, and he either he made it pretty far or won. I can't. I think he's made it really far. Um, and you know they're trying to build Sean O'Malley up because they're always going to build the Irish guys up if they can now. And uh, and he's also just marketable in general. Um, do you think do you think Sean O'Malley deserves a top ten guy now? Not top ten, but top fifteen. Yes, not top ten though. They, they should probably give him. Uh, let's see, what weight class is he in? One forty-five. Is that Man, right? He's bantamweight. He's he's one thirty-five. Really? Yeah. Is he really? That is insane. If he is, damn, you're yeah. right. That's crazy. Um. Yeah, he's he's probably taller than Deron Wynn. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, he had really good, really good work, really good head movement, uh, really good shot selection. Um, like the dude was just bull rushing, mean, him, just kind of picking his shots and uh, you know eating them up. I don't know. If you if you match him against Benavidez, I I, I don't know who would win. Those are different weight classes. Benavidez is a flyweight. Fly <laughs> oh well, still. <laughs> Who the hell is the bantamweight champion Benavides right now? Benavides is a lot smaller than him, so I'd have to. And Benef see, Benavides has fought some great fighters and made it very contentious, but O'Malley is so much. Wait bigger. a second, yeah. is bantamweight Cejudo? Yeah. Oh good god! 
Oh, oh Cejudo would fuck Sean O'Malley up. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he's quite at that level, but uh, yeah, that would be bad very bad. impressive. Um, yeah, he'll have problems, I think, once he reaches the top echelon where the guys are grittier and tougher. Um, they'll get in his face, you know, they'll hit him back. He hasn't been funny by the hits him back yet. You know, he's yeah, everyone's kind of everyone scared apart. right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I definitely think he should go top 15. I'd have to look at the Bantamweight rankings again to see. Because, dude, Bantamweight is, like, probably top three from the stacked divisions in the UFC. Oh, rankings. yeah, it's stacked. It's uh, it's insane. Because you got, you got um, um, Cejudo. You got Marlon Marais. You got Aljamain Sterling. Um, Corey Sandhagen. Peter Yan. Um, yeah, you got John John Tom Dawson Cruz, is a beast. Tom and Cruz might be coming back. TJ Dillashaw might be coming back. Aldo's fighting Cejudo in that joke of a fight. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so Bantamweight is – oh, and Jimmy Rivera is also really good. Uh, so, man, I don't really know. Definitely not top 10. I would say top 15, though. You could throw him someone in the top 15. Lower end of top 15. Yeah, that's they, they want to take them slow. Place. You want to take them slow. You don't want to give them, you know, you don't want them to do the Darren Till and kind of peak too early. You know, rough throw them to the wolves or, you know, build up a star. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he looked good. He did. He looked really good. Um, and then <laughs> moving on to the main card. Uh, also, did we get all those right? Did we, did we get any of those right? <laughs> I guess we didn't really do the prelims too much. Uh, I thought Deron Wynn was going to win, so I guess I got that one wrong. I did pick Adolfo Vera, I picked Mark Madsen, and I picked O'Malley. So I got – I missed one. Uh, well, that doesn't matter. Yeah, because fuck, it's prelims, whatever. All right, and then uh, – what, what does matter is this main card. Main card, uh, Alex Oliveira defeats Max Griffin in a great fight, back and forth. Uh, both yeah, are very bloody by the end of it. Um yeah, overall, I would say this this so far this year has been the best fight card overall as far as quality. Yeah, in my opinion. Yeah, it, it had the best fight and the worst fight of the year simultaneously. <laughs> See, and I, I didn't think that the, that that main event was as bad as everyone else thinks. How the fuck can you say that, dude? I mean, they threw historically low numbers. It was it was literally the mo- the least mass strike shouldn't throw in a middleweight fight of all time. I guess I was I was <laughs> I was interested in Adesanya's game plan. I was interested to see how he was gonna react how he was oh, reacting. Oh, we're we're skipping ahead. We'll get to that. Uh, so yeah, Cowboy Alex Lavier defeats him by unanimous decision. Uh, it was a split, split decision, right? Split decision. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, but Which really is what we pretty much figured that it was gonna be yeah. 50-50 shot. Yeah, close fight. Um, mostly contested on the feet. I think there was a couple of p- moments that were on the ground. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, great fight. Um, and definitely a, a much-needed win for Alex Oliveira to stay relevant. Um, yeah, for sure. And then back from the trenches, the only fight on the card that we got wrong, or that, or I guess that you got wrong, I got two wrong, but uh, oh, yeah. Um, Neil Magny defeats Jing Ling, Li Jing Ling, Jing Ling. <laughs> uh, unanimous decision of 30 27. Um, domination, you know, yeah, just dominated him. Every he was, I mean, he was literally better at every area, like on the ground, yeah. on the feet, boxing range, kick range, conditioning was better. Um, Really, the only positive thing you can say about Li Jing Ling's performance is his head movement. Because <laughs> there was long periods where he was just like up against the fence, and he was like, "All right, I'm gonna show him how many punches I can just slip." Um, um, you know, uh, you know how you always talk about how people have punchable faces. Yeah. Jing Jing Liang has a very punchable face for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. I don't like that guy's face. I hate Li Jingling. You heard it here first. <laughs> the House of Rocks does not like your face. <laughs> Change your face. Um, I'm surprised we haven't gotten to it yet. Uh, but, I mean, if you're going to... Is there, is there going to be a hang it up of the week? I've got one if you I... don't. Because mine is Yo Romero. Hang it up. <laughs> hang it up, Romero. 
But uh, um, I'm surprised you haven't seen Lee Jingling to hang it up. No, no, he's not my hanging up. If I do have a hang up, it's if I do have a hang it up, it's definitely Oliveira and Max Griffin both. <laughs> Just hang it up. I guess you could say Duran win, but I mean he's so Stop. young. But damn, potential. No point. <laughs> Actually, I don't care. Just let them fight. Actually, let them fight to the death. <laughs> um, and then moving I don't think on. I have any hanging up for the first uh, time. <laughs> yeah, that just probably is the first time. Um, moving on to Benil Dar- Darius uh, finishes. I was actually shocked when I read this was in round two because I, f- I felt like I heard this being in round one. Um, but it was round two. <laughs> uh, Benil Dariush finishes Drakkar close in round two with a KO TKO. Um, yeah, and it was close. Yeah, it was very competitive. Oh, First, uh, close rocked him. Like once yeah. or twice. Yeah. Um, it, it appeared to be that... Close was slightly better on the feet, but he just gets—he got a little wild, and yeah, uh, it yeah. cost him because he looked like and he was cost him you crisper shots. Yes, and I've who should take care of that? Shiloh, Georgia, go to bed, go to bed, Georgia. No, Talk no. to your wife like that. <laughs> it's my autistic bulldog. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I guess I've I've, been, I've lost my belt officially. Ha- hashtag and new. Uh, it hurts. It doesn't you feel had, good. <laughs> you had what three title defenses? I, I had a good run. Or two title defenses, maybe I think it was. Yeah. Well, you know yeah. what? I'll be I'll be back. I'll be back stronger than ever. No, I'm not. I'm not rematching you till you till you win ten times. <laughs> That's not fair. I gave you three rematches. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Darius gets the finish after uh, a wild round. I uh, can't really get. It. I think he tries to go for a takedown, and he might have gotten it briefly, but he couldn't really hold him down. And then uh, Darius or close rocks him, and then Darius uh, they kind of get into a wild exchange, and Darius clips him. Slug fest. Yeah, clips him and then uh, finishes him. Yeah. Um, really great. just blowing through all this because I can't wait to talk about the last two um, for complete <laughs> polar opposite reasons. Um, and then Wiley Zhang, or Zhang Wiley, whatever, um, maintains or keeps her belt in, like, one of the best fights ever. Yeah, in spectacular and fashion. Easily the best woman's fight in MMA history. Um, like not even, there's not even, I was trying to, I was thinking about it. I didn't want to say that at first, but I wanted to think about it f- for a little while. And then I was thinking about it. Yeah. There's, there's not even a, like a close second. Um, I saw a couple people saying Holly Holm versus Misha Tate was a close second, which is just the, just the most mongoloid esque thing you could say, because that fight was, that fight was awful until the last minute. It was four and a half rounds. Of like Holly landing like ten punches and kicks, and Misha landing like three or four, and just her just <laughs> screaming before every punch. It's awful, awful fight. <laughs> like not even from like a fan perspective, or like you're like looking at really technical striking. No, it just sucked all around. I would. Um, and it ended up being good in the last minute, but uh. I mean, really, the only ones I can think of are uh, are Rose and Joanna. Yeah. Both of those fights, and uh, and Holly Holm and and Ronda Rousey. Yeah, and uh, Shevchenko versus uh, Nunez too was really good, also. Mm. But those fights are more technical, whereas like this fight was technical, but it was also like just a brawl. Well, it was it was it was you watched Rocky, you watched Rocky in real life. <laughs> yeah, that's all it was, and I uh, last. Last um, episode, MMA show, I said that we found that we had our fight of the year with Paul Felder and Dan Hooker. I was pretty confident we wouldn't get any fight better than that. But uh, good God, if the next card didn't immediately blow that one out of the water. And now we have, uh, yeah, easily the best women's fight of all time. 
and in my opinion, probably top ten. It's in the top ten greatest fights of all time. Yeah, it's definitely definitely in top ten for sure. Um, I I can't even tell you. I mean, you got yeah, you got like Stephen Bonner and Forrest Griffin, and uh, Shogun versus Dan Henderson. Oh yeah, dude, that that's another one. One and but, two. I mean, and yeah, your, Maynard two and three are also amazing. Yeah, but uh, there's not there's not. Me, uh, tons of fights I can think of that 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 would do better that are better than that. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. Um, so I guess we should uh, both say our scorecards. So I had it forty nine forty six for Zhang Wei Li. I think I had her winning one one three four and five maybe, or it was either that or it was. Or it was uh, one, one, two, four, and five. I can't remember though. But it was she went, had her winning four. But that there was uh, there was one round. There was like a swing round. I think that could have gone either way. But I feel like the rest of them were pretty, um, pretty close. Yeah. Um, but clear. Yeah, I had um, I had the fight. Um, Three ra- three rounds to one, and I have had round the first round a draw. So I had I had round one draw, and I'm pretty sure I gave Joanna. Um, I think I gave her three. Yeah. So yeah, I gave I gave Joanna three, and I gave the first round draw, and I gave uh, I gave Zhang uh, two, four, and five. Yeah, see, I can't remember if I gave Yuana two or three. Okay, I just can't remember which round it was. But I gave her one. Um, you should also, you should also, yeah, Evan does. Evan gives 10-10 ten, ten rounds. 10-10 ten, rounds. Yeah, fuck everybody. Yes, they I should give ten, it's it's in the rule book. But they just don't give them. But, uh, yeah, round one, was, round one was easily a 10-10. Ten, ten. I judge the fights based on how I think the judge, with like, not being able to do that because the judges never do that. So even though they're allowed to, they never do it. But um, I'm shaking it up, baby. <laughs> um, so yeah, so they slug it down the feet. I think Zhang gets a couple takedowns, but they don't. She doesn't hold them at all. Um, and the biggest difference, the numbers. If you look at the numbers, the fight, the statistics were very close. Like I mean, I think there was like two or three rounds where the the number of strikes landed were actually dead even. Damn. Like literally, runs money. Uh, and uh, the real difference was. You could see the difference when Zhang would hit her versus when Joanna would hit Zhang. There was a big yeah. difference in the damage and power. Um, you know, yeah. she had Joanna's head snapping back a lot, um, yeah. and uh, by the end of it, her head was literally like she looked like Mega Mind. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah. If you haven't seen the pictures, definitely go look them up, uh, dude. Yeah, Joanna's a tough son of a bitch, man. Yeah, Joanna. That- Definitely mixed her attacks up more, like went to the legs more and yeah. the body a little more than Zhang did. Zhang did go to the legs and body, but she was more going to the head than anything. Um, yeah. Tried to tried to take Yuan down, was successful a couple times, but Yuan would get right back up. Yeah, and there was a couple times where she actually, I mean, there, I think there was one time where Zhang looked like she got rocked a little bit. And there was a, uh, there was a couple times, there was a few times where... Yuana was definitely hurt. Like, yeah, she, she, she could tell she was like, "Oh shit, I'm rocked," and started backing up. Um, and remember that I can't remember what round it was. The fight was just so insane, and I haven't heard anybody talking about it. But do you remember the crazy strike that was thrown after the bell by Yuana? I think it was like round one or two. Oh yeah, yeah, it was she, like uh, it's round two way after the bell. Yeah, like I well, mean, I like just... bell went. There was one second, and then she threw it. <laughs> like it wasn't like she yeah. threw it close to the end. Um, yeah, I don't knock. I don't knock her too much for it, because uh, I just can imagine like the adrenaline going on, and uh, it, it seemed like it was just instinct because Zeng punched her right at the bell. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't. I, I don't knock it too much. Um. When I was uh, reading like the the global like scoring for it. Um, I want to say MMA decisions had 
It's like like eighty percent of them had it for Zhang probably, and uh, most of Sherdog had it for Zhang. There were some people saying that Yoana should have won. Um, I just don't couple... see how you could even say. Yeah, that there was a came out with that. What rounds do you give her to win that fight? Yeah, I mean. I mean, even like my favorite MMA analyst like thought you won a one, which I thought was kind of shocking. Um, but uh, uh, I mean, he hasn't. You could argue she got round one, and you could argue she got round three. This this was the thing is uh, I felt like every round was really close, but or really competitive, but there was at least three rounds that were clear for Zhang, even though they were all competitive. There was at least three that were clear that she won. Yeah, and especially the, especially the last round, I thought round five, I thought was like a big cement, and as for Zhang to win the fight. Yeah, and she got a takedown at the end of that round, I think too, right? Yeah, and I remember think I remember thinking round five, she clearly won that round. And I was like, okay, well Zhang, that that cemented her win. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what other round you give Joanna. Yeah. Yeah, it's it was it was one of those fights where it was really competitive, but I felt like there was a clear winner. Um, like no one got blown out, even if even like if you say forty nine forty six, it sounds like a blowout, but it's not. It's not a blowout because all the rounds were competitive. They both damaged each other immensely. Um, and I don't like Yuana at all. I she's yeah. probably like my second least favorite female fighter, um, but I respect her I like skills. Yuana. I respect her skills like immensely. And I think the fight was amazing. Yeah, um, dude. I mean, she's a tough. She's just so freaking tough. It's not like because like she's mean, but I, th- I think she just does that for mind games and stuff. And she backs that shit up. Yeah, well, she's also known to be really mean towards fans and like media members and stuff, like rude to them. Um, yeah, but I, don't uh, know anything I also about find that. her to be incredibly cringy. Like just watching her is really cringe when she's talking. But um, yeah, but. Uh, yeah, amazing fight. Respect to both of them. And, um, where I feel, I feel like 2020 um, has had the most arguments over fights uh, of, of any other year, like already. Yeah, it's I feel like lot. every single fight card, everyone's like, robbery, robbery. Yeah, like every single card that's happening. Yeah, and like I said, there's like, there are fights. That are like I said in one in our one of our other videos. Um, there are fights where someone definitely should have won, and they got they got screwed, and people should cry robbery over that. But yeah. there are also some that are super competitive and could have gone either way, and people just claim robbery for no reason, like just because they're mad. Like Felder versus Hooker, like yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, you really can't get mad at either one of them for winning because they both, you know, yeah. It was super competitive, but um, yeah, yeah, tons, yeah, tons of uh, really close and really competitive fights people are complaining about. Um, but who do you think? Um, who would you like to see either one of these people face next? Um, I mean, Zhang, you have to give the winner of Rose and uh, um, Andraj. <clears throat> Andraj, yeah. I mean, I don't know who else is in line. Yeah, it's got so be it's it's. It's gonna be the winner of that, and then, um, and then Yuana. I don't really know. Um, I really don't know who she's supposed to fight next. Um, is is that girl in the same weight class? The um, the uh, what's her name? The Dragon Ball Z girl. Right now, it's different weight class. Roxy. Yeah, yeah, Roxy. Uh, I thought. Yeah, she's she's in weight class above, right? Below. Oh yeah, above. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Above. She's at one thirty-five. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I just don't. I don't know. I don't really know who you give you on a. Maybe uh, she. Maybe, I would like to see her possibly go uh, up a weight class. That may. That might be fun. Get her a little more jacked. Yeah, I mean, well, she fought Shevchenko at one twenty-five, but uh, there's really not a lot of other people there. But, but um, I would like to see. Yeah, on Zhang fights. Hopefully, Rose wins. She should. But who knows? Uh, awesome. Oh my god, can you imagine Zhang versus Rose? Oh my god. Yeah. And oh god damn, I don't know who, who you have the favorite in that one because uh I probably got Zhang. I don't know, man. Cause uh 
I think Rose is the best boxer in that division with just her hands. Um, because she just you know cleaned house with Yoan on the feet, um, with her with her hands. Uh, really, the only difference maker in the second fight was Yoan threw more leg kicks, but um. Wiley isn't that much of a leg, as good of a leg kicker, and she's not as lanky. So that might present some problems. Yeah. Um, and then you got to wonder who's got the most, the more power. Um, because Rose knocked her out, and then on the second fight, like dropped her or rocked her once or twice. But I mean, you saw what Jane did to her head, so, you know, on his head. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's yeah. A, yeah. And then if it goes to the ground, man, I don't know. If you Rose comes back, if Rose comes back and looks the same as she did before, I would I would probably favor Rose slightly. Um, but Zing's just so goddamn tough. I just don't know, man. Um, but I would like because to see, now we've know. seen we've... <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> we've seen Rose get knocked out. Yeah, well, that was because of a slam, because uh, she had whoever coached her to go for a Kimura off a single leg is an idiot. But um, I kind of stuff like that Kimura off the single leg stuff works against lower level competition, but not a super high level strong wrestler Andraj. They're just yeah. gonna do exactly that. They're gonna slam around your head like a <laughs> DC did to Gustafson or you know whoever name whoever. Um, but uh, I would like to see Ioana fight Tatiana Suarez if she comes if she can come back soon enough and be healthy. I don't even remember who she is, but uh, she's undefeated right now, eight and zero. I'm not tired. She's been out with a neck injury recently. Mm-hmm. Uh, she, uh, she actually went into her last fight with I think she had like a bulging disc in her neck, and nice. uh, had a very tough fight. Um, but she's kind of blaming that on the neck thing, so I don't really know how that's going to go. Um, and if Tatiana is not ready to come back, that also could be a, a jump too far because uh, Tatiana. I mean, uh, she's not quite ranked that highly yet. But uh, if she doesn't, if she doesn't um, come back in time, I would like to see her fight um, Nina Ansarov, which is the girl Tatiana just beat in her last fight. Mm. But uh, Tatiana, I think, won the first two rounds by just wrestling her to death, and by the third round, she was super gassed, and Nina Ansarov was just piecing her up. Um, so that would be a really, really fun fight because Nina um, is a really good striker. Yeah. Um, so that'd be a great fight if they can do that one. Yeah. Um, that'd be cool. I mean, and honestly, you my hang it up might be you want it just for health reasons. <laughs> <laughs> just, well, I, just, I just saw it today where, um, what did they say she had? It was, did they only got a two month suspension? And God. seven other fighters in the car got seven months. How did they yeah, get two probably, months? They took some brain damage, dude. Yeah, Good dude. God. It's probably because Dana White's trying to set up that rematch immediately. Well, he said the press conference probably wasn't going to do that because he didn't want them to end their careers both together. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't think they should rematch. Uh, I will definitely see her fight the winner of Andrade and uh, Rose and... Uh, Miana Iwana has, has lost her last four title shots, so she's probably not going to – I mean, that that division, you never know what's going to happen, but I don't think she'll get the belt back, but you never know. But um, we just, we just need a new Ultimate Fighter with all women again, so we can throw in a bunch of new people in this mix. Yeah. I mean, uh, you got you got uh, Car- Carla uh, – Carla – Esper – Esper – Esparza – yeah, you got her. She sucks, though. She's on a two-fight win streak. I love streak. how horrifically insensitive we are to the fighters on, on this show. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> she's Carlos <laughs> people's worst. worst. She's just not great. She's um, on a two-fight win streak, though. Uh, ranked ranked uh, sixth or seventh or something. I mean, uh, against who? I mean, what should be... should be Claudia, right? But Claudia sucks, too, in my opinion, so... Claudia. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Um, oh, yeah, Women's Ultimate Fire wouldn't be the worst thing ever, but I know Claudia um, beat her. Yeah, so she, oh, she beat Grasso in that very controversial decision, which I, I thought Esparza won, but whatever. Um, and Esparza just got decimated by Suarez not too long ago. Mm. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But uh, moving on to the next fight. 
Um, possibly, actually, yeah, the, yeah, the, the worst the middleweight, middleweight, the worst middleweight title fight, and probably the worst middleweight fight in the history of the division, I'd say. It was like a he- well, it was like a heavyweight fight, really. It was way worse than any heavyweight fight. <laughs> uh, they threw like I mean, it was like single digit numbers every round, pretty much. Uh, or not every round, but there was a couple. I think it was like two rounds were single digit, and the other ones were like ten. Um, Ezra Asanya wins unanimous decision, forty nine forty six and forty eight forty seven on two scorecards. Um, yeah, just an awful fight. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, it's not. I can defend it. It was, it was absolutely god awful. That being said. I understand why it was god awful. I get it. I get what was happening. Um, they told Romero to pick your shots and just explode so you don't get tired. Don't just blitz them and get tired. Uh, just wait and then throw your bombs at them. And Adesanya was like, "I'm only yeah, gonna, but- I'm only going to throw unless he throws first, and then I'm going to counter him." So it ended up being Romero just took the center of the octagon. Went like this and just stood there for five straight rounds. And, what a moron. Yeah, Adesanya fainted a lot. He threw a lot of hip feints, a lot of shoulder feints, uh, moving his hands a lot, just trying to uh, feint him into throwing something. And then Adesanya would try to counter him. Uh, that got really old. Ref warns him a bunch of times to, hey, you know, this is a fight. People paid $70 on paper. I mean, I didn't pay $70 on paper. But, uh, People paid seventy dollars on pay per view to watch this, and well, uh, he should have. He should have told Romero that. Well, he, see, they, they were both being inactive. They were both being inactive, but it's kind of like what you said. Uh, I don't think they should score the fight in leaning of the champion ever. You should, you should score it round by round. But Romero is there to win the belt. Yeah, yeah you're not the it. champion. You got to take it from him. So you're just you're yeah. just gonna walk to Sunday. I can stand there. You're gonna lose. I mean, yeah, you're you're going into Adesanya's den. You're yeah, going it, into his territory to take something from him. What he has nothing to prove to you. He's yeah. just standing in there like, all right, come get it. And Romero was like, well, you're not gonna come fight me. Yeah, what? it's for, for Romero to go after the fight and say that Adesanya <laughs> was running. I mean, dude, Adesanya was the one going forward most of the time. <laughs> well, he, and he, he is total. I'm pretty sure the total strikes is way more out of Adesanya's favor. Yeah, I mean, he threw more and he landed more. So I mean, I mean, dude, I, I just. But Romero isn't exactly known for being a smart fighter. I mean, he's kind of a you know big dumb ogre. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's just stupid that he would go and complain. Uh, and it's really you know shitty for the fans. You know, people paid money to watch that, but. Uh, you know, it is what it is. It happens. Shit happens. Uh, it happened. Um, I don't think. I think Adesanya's stock will probably take a little bit of a hit from that fight. But if you remember, Anderson Silva had several fights like that. Uh, Anderson right. Silva versus Demi Maia. Anderson Silva versus Talos Leites. Um, Anderson Silva versus Patrick Cote. Um, but honestly, more. Than- I, Anderson Silva versus Patrick Cote was a good fight. I liked that fight. The fight was terrible. Um, Anderson, <laughs> oh, Anderson fight. versus Nick Nick Diaz, also a terrible fight. Um, Which Nick, Di- I'm pretty sure if I, I, I'm going to go back, I'm going to watch that soon. But I'm pretty sure I remember I, I thought Diaz won. <laughs> it was uh, that was one of those fights where uh, Anderson threw and landed more, but Nick would just like. Nick was walking him down the whole time and trying to hit him, and Anderson just kept circling, circling. He wasn't like he just wasn't letting him get close to him at all. Um, I have to go back. I'm gonna go back and rewatch it soon. Um, but this fight honestly reminded me the most of uh, Woodley versus Wonder Boy two. I don't remember that fight at all, but it was pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, you know, five rounds of them just staring at each other. (laughs) Um. (laughs) It really reminded me of just a heavy. I felt like this was like a really like it was just like if these were he- if they were heavyweights, um, people wouldn't have hated it so much as much I, as they did. 
I don't think so, dude. I mean, it was like it was like worse or equally as bad as Ngannou versus Derek Lewis. It was like the same level of that. Well, uh, um, let's see. right here. I've, Adesanya threw 132 strikes. Uh, uh, Romero threw 89. Uh, Adesanya landed 48, and Romero landed 40. Both female and, fighters in the co-main event threw landed more punches in each round than they did in the entire fight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, oddly enough, they did not count one of Romero's takedowns. I think it's because he didn't follow through with it. He he got him down, but he popped right back up. He didn't get on top of him at all. It's kind of like in wrestling where they don't count the takedown if you knock him down. You got to actually get on top of him, so they didn't really count. Yeah. But um, how did you, how did you score it? Well, okay, so it's. The, I, it took me a while to digest this fight. I've been thinking, I've been contemplating this fight a lot. Because, and this is going to make, this is like going to make people hate me and probably think I'm an idiot. Because if I'm scoring it round by round, I'm, pro, I'm giving Romero the first two rounds initially. And I'm giving Romero the fifth round and I'm giving Adesanya three and four. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't think the belt should go to Romero. I don't think he won. The, I don't think he deserves to win the fight. So I'm very happy he didn't get the decision because he didn't prove he didn't he didn't he doesn't deserve it. He doesn't he didn't do anything in the cage to deserve the win. So uh, just out of pure inactivity, even though you could have scored the rounds, I think there should have just been no scoring in this fight. Once it was over, they should have just been like, "All right, we're not scoring these rounds. That was that's that was retarded." Uh, uh, give the but uh, you're still a champ. Why would we? Why would Romero be the champ? Yeah. So, that's I, what I, think. I scored it fifty forty five or forty nine forty six for Adesanya. <laughs> I feel like he won almost every round, if not every round. Uh, because the the only round that you could I feel like you could argue Romero won was the first round, but I want to say Adesanya. If I haven't looked at the stats, but it felt like Adesanya still hit him more in the first round, but Romero hit him with one really good shot in that round too. So yeah, but I want to go back same, and rewatch it. At the same time, I you when the strikes are that close to being equal, you have to take into the into consideration octagon control because you never take that into account unless the strikes the striking and grappling is equal right and I felt like uh, Adesanya had the octagon control for the entire fight every single round um I mean you don't get octagon control by standing there going like this that's not octagon control just standing there octagon yeah. control is who is moving around and who is controlling the angles and the pace and that was Adesanya like 100 percent yeah the more I think about the fight, the more yeah, the more I uh, disagree with myself. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, Romero's leg was purple by the end of it, which was the only visible damage on either fighter. Yeah, um, but his leg was nasty looking. Yeah, his leg was chewed up, but uh, yeah, I mean it was sad. It was uh, it's one of the worst fights I've ever seen. Top ten yeah. worst fights I've ever seen. Hang it up, Yola Romero. <laughs> Hang no, it up. I think we. I think you uh, give Romero one of the top. He's, he's lost his last four, I think, right? That last three, now, yeah. So he's he's lost his last three, but he's one in five in his last, uh, or sorry, one in four in his last five fights. Love, wow. Yeah, he's. Uh, I mean, but everybody's so terrified of him, but he keeps losing. I mean, the thing is, is he's a weird fighter and he's a stupid fighter. He's insanely athletically gifted, has the ability to, to finish anybody within a, a micro penis of a second. And, uh, <laughs> um, but, uh, always chooses to just sit there and play this like Muay Thai defense and then just randomly explode. And then when he doesn't fit the finish, just think he won. He's just like, oh, I won. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I thought that. I thought Whitaker beat him both times. Granted, the second time could have gone either way, uh, depending on how liberal you are with 10-8 rounds. Uh, but 
I thought I thought Whitaker won both, and I thought Costa beat him also. And I re I just rewatched the Costa fight, and uh, yeah, rewatching I was even more certain that Costa won. Like I, I honestly I honestly don't even see you could have an argument that Costa didn't win that fight. Twenty nine twenty eight. Um. Hmm. Um. You know. Well, I say give Romero uh, a bottom ten guy, and uh, if he if he sucks again, then cut him. You're out. <laughs> <laughs> They'll probably give him. Um, I mean, shit. I guess the only two options are Till or Cannoneer. Can give can, give uh, fucking Cannoneer. Get, let him fight out Asanya for God's sakes. He's done enough. Uh, I wouldn't say he's done enough quite yet, but he's one one more away to being enough. I think he gets one more win. He's 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 there. That's what I would say. I'd like to see Cannoneer fight Whitaker, and then the winner of that, if if somehow miraculously Whitaker come back looking good, and win. Um, I guess give him the or okay. So here's the thing. If Whitaker wins, Whitaker doesn't have any bone marrow. He's not going to do it. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say I like to see Whitaker fight Cannoneer. If Whitaker if Cannoneer wins, give him the title shot. If Whitaker wins, have um, Whitaker fight um, Till or Gastelum. Um, either one of those would be uh, good. Um, I wish Gastelum would just, just would just keep- go down a fucking weight class for already. So yeah, he could seriously. Um, I love to I love to see him fight Usman. That'd be awesome. I think he'd do great. Yeah, he would do. He probably would do pretty well. I mean, he he arguably beat Tyron Woodley back in the day. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Middleweight's kind of weird. I mean, it's stacked yeah. still, but like, dude, but could you imagine Kelvin fighting like Colby Covington, Usman? Masvidal. Could you imagine all those matchups? That'd be yeah. crazy. Yeah. God, that'd be so much. Sorry about that. Um, awesome. Yeah. Uh, honestly, the worst matchup for him, I think, out of any of them would be Masvidal. Uh, yeah, well, shit, man. Yeah, probably, honestly. Well, I mean, I don't know. It just depends on how if Usman can really just span the takedowns on him and uh, keep him from getting his offense going. I mean, Kelvin's got great... wrestling's good. Is is really good? Yeah, yeah, but his cardio isn't the best. His cardio always kind of fades. Yeah, yeah. but if he gets down to one seventy, it might be a different story for him. Yeah, I mean, he he had bad cardio even when he was at one seventy. Uh, that was kind of the reason why I lost to Woodley, lost to Neil fucking Magny because he got tired. Oh, yeah. Um, he has all the skill, just uh, the conditioning has never been there and the weight cutting and all that stuff. But I don't know. You never – I mean, you never know. That would be a fun yeah. fight though, with him versus Moss. That will be amazing. Yeah. God, yeah. that – Great fight. Um, but, uh, yeah, Instead I don't know. Instead of hanging it up, I have lose the weight. For drop, this episode. drop the pounds. Yeah. Kelvin Gaston, lose the weight, you fat <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Isn't it crazy to think he'd be dropping to to the weight that you weigh right now? Yeah, that's terrifying. To think right now, if I just walked into an octagon with my weight, I'd fight Usman. That's if fucking I, if terrifying. If I walked in right now, I'd dude. fight Francis Ngannou. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 220. Can you imagine what the, that disparity would look like? Oh, my God. Can you imagine? You're walking in. There's a guy staring at you, Brock Lesnar. <laughs> oh my god! Fucking fight. Yeah, that'd be, he... that'd be awful. <laughs> that would be awful. Um, now I, I would cut down to 155, which is still terrifying because I'd be fighting fucking uh, uh, Khabib. Ah, uh, you you could cut to 45 for sure. For sure. I would. I would never do it. I don't. I don't want to. <laughs> I, mean, you, I would never do pro, that. In the, in the alternate reality where you're a pro fighter, that's the one you have to go to. Because uh, how tall are you? You're like five ten, five nine, five nine and a half. Yeah, you'd be looking forty five. Because Khabib's five ten, fights at one fifty five. He's pretty jacked. Yeah, I he, can't. He, that's from like eighty five. I refuse. I feel like <laughs> I was in the Holocaust, dude. There's no way I'm doing it. I'd have to get the middleweight. I have to be like one eighty five. I'm five eleven. 
Yeah, there's there's no way. Well, dude, that, that dude's the dude's that dude is a tall is shorter than me fighting a middleweight. Fucking fat so in the prelims. <laughs> Deron win. Yeah. Poor, yeah. Poor Deron win. Hang it up. <laughs> Lose the don't, pounds, you fat bitch. Don't don't hang it up. Lose the weight, for the love of God. <laughs> Maybe call Diego Sanchez's uh fucking me- mentor dude now. <laughs> He's guru. He's guru uh, man. Climb the mountain to his temple. Maybe you'll he lose weight with his with his chi movements. <laughs> Dude, I swear to God, those two are banging. They've been uh, there was an interview that came with them came with them recently, and throughout the interview, they randomly start holding hands, like interlacing their fingers and holding hands. Start butterfly kissing. Dude, There's what if two- Diego Sanchez? Become, like as he's as he's about to walk into the octagon, they put the Vaseline on, walks up to him, butterfly kisses him, starts <laughs> blinking his eyes with him, and then he walks into the octagon. Oh my god! I mean, at this point, I don't even know. All right, look at look at this. You're trying to tell me that these two guys aren't banging. <laughs> Those two guys, that guy Diego's blowing him for sure. <laughs> right. He's transferring his energy through through blowing him. His <laughs> cheek. Oh god! Not that there's anything wrong with that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But I'm just saying it. I'm putting he's, out. He's like Diego. Your semen, my semen, will flow through your veins and give you strength. <laughs> <laughs> I would give you Floyd Mayweather defense through my chi. <laughs> my chi comes through my penis. <laughs> Christ. Um, but yeah, I guess that sums up the card. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, if you haven't te- if you haven't left yet, you know, just get just get out. Um, and honest to God, we really, really only have time to uh, go through this next card, so I'm just gonna say something real quick. Uh, Juicy from Mega versus Brandon Morena. Uh, Francis Chinalga versus John McDessie. Uh, Johnny Walker hopefully wins. He wins TriStar. And he's fighting Nick and D. Kriloff. Uh, Moikano is fighting Demir Hadsovic. Uh, I don't even know that guy, but Moikano's probably gonna win because he's good. Uh, Dan Maya's fighting Gilbert Burns. Fun fight. They're both great grapplers. I uh, hope it goes to the ground. That's just a boring strike-up fight. If it goes on the feet, I'm going to favor Gilbert Burns. No, I'm going to favor Dan Maya, actually. And then uh, Kevin Lee's fighting Charles Oliveira. Um, I'm probably going to say Charles Oliveira's going to submit him, but Kevin Lee might be to watch the defense. All right. I got Kevin Lee. I got Damian Maya. Uh, and I have Johnny Walker. And I don't know anybody else. <laughs> but I'm going to do, I'm gonna do my research. <laughs> All right. We're I didn't have time to research. Yeah, we kind of did the spur of the moment. Uh, That's actually a great fight night, though. Uh, this is you don't watch the fight the nights, fight nights in a long this. time. Yeah, the fights are almost all guaranteed to be great. I'm really, pumped for this fucking fight night. The most compelling fight is the main event, I think, because Charles Oliveira is a – he's on a six-fight win streak. Um, I Granted, against not – the highest level of competition, but still six fights, one streak in the UFC is gonna is impressive. And uh he is a wizard on the ground as far as jiu-jitsu goes. Um, like submits almost anybody goes to the ground with. And uh Kevin Lee uh, looked great in his last fight against Gillespie, but he's a very good wrestler, and you gotta wonder how his submission defense will hold up. Um, I have to imagine he's not gonna want to go to the ground with them. Um, because I would imagine Charles Rivera would tap him. So really, it might end up being a stand-up fight, and uh, I don't know who to favor. So I guess we'll see. Kevin, Kevin Lee's nasty, man. I hope Damian Maya wins. Out of any of these fights, the one thing I'm really pulling for is, is Damian Maya to pull out a, another win because he's on a. I feel like he's on a tear right now, out of nowhere. Yeah, he's kind of in like the retirement tear. He's not going to get a title shot or anything, but um, he's he's all tapped out on title title shots. Yeah. But, I mean, he's on a three-fight win streak. He's doing great. I'm, I'm super happy for him. Yeah, I am too. Uh, um, God, he beat Masvidal. Good God almighty. Yeah, it was a very close fight. And if it had been five rounds, I'd probably have to favor Masvidal. But, um, oh, and Gilbert Burns, also a wizard on the ground. Did you agree to jiu-jitsu? Uh, I hope it goes to the ground because I would love to see who's better in MMA jiu-jitsu because they're both incredible on the ground. Um and I like. I don't Gilbert. think anyone's better than Maya. Well, he's a. I don't know. He's an ADCC world champion. Um, 
And I got I like Gunner. I mean, I like Gilbert because he beat Gunner Nelson, and Gil, Gunner Nelson is the most boring fighter on the UFC roster. And I hope they cut him. I don't care if he wins or not. Cut him because nice. he's awful to watch. I got Sergio Pettis for that. They're both terrible. Yeah, they're both terrible to watch. But uh, all right. Well, that wraps it up. Unlike and unsubscribe. You bunch of mongoloids. We're out. <laughs>